Greetings, I'm Christopher Moyer and I'm coming to you from my office in Stillwater, Minnesota. And uh, for those of you who don't already know me, I'm someone who's very interested in uh, research related to massage therapy. And I'm making this video to uh, address a topic that came up in one of the Facebook forums on massage therapy. Uh, specifically in that forum, someone raised the uh, issue that uh, people are sometimes educated that you might take someone's headache from them as a part of treatment. Uh, and should we be teaching people this, and is that a possibility, and so on and so forth. And I thought this was a really interesting topic, and I wanted to address it a little bit in case uh, other people think it's interesting. Uh, on the topic of massage therapy research, uh, shameless plug, I have co-edited an entire book on integrating massage therapy research and practice, and specifically on the topic of headaches, we have an entire chapter in this book authored by Dr. Albert Maraska on treatment of headaches using massage therapy. Uh, so the specific topic of taking someone's headache from them and, and having it be your own is not addressed in there. Uh, but maybe we'll cover that in future editions of the book. Uh, but nevertheless, the topic is covered quite extensively. Uh, so in doing this, I'd like to try to illustrate how a scientist approaches a phenomenon like this. So I don't doubt for a minute that a therapist might be more vulnerable to getting a headache of his or her own when treating someone with a headache. I think that's possible. I don't know whether it is the case or if it's been studied but I can imagine that it's possible, and I can imagine several ways by which that might occur. So let me say what I think those might be. Um, in thinking about this, the first thing I'd point out is that uh, a magical or supernatural explanation is not at all satisfying. And this might be obvious to some people, uh, but not to others. There seems to be quite a bit of enthusiasm in some pockets of the massage therapy profession for explanations that uh, are supernatural, to be frank. So uh, these would be explanations of vitalistic energy and so on. Uh, but I'm going to discount those entirely and discuss some other possibilities that I think are likely. Uh, the first of these, worth mentioning, is total coincidence. So all of us, almost all of us, there are some people who claim not to get headaches and they're lucky, but most of us uh, get a headache from time to time. And so if you have a patient who has a headache, and in the course of working on that patient you get a headache, it's entirely possible, maybe even likely, that you are going to get a headache at that time, at that day, anyway, due to who knows what cause, but for a reason that had nothing to do with working on someone who had a headache. And further, if we knew something about the frequency of headaches in the people involved, we could even put a statistical estimate on how likely that is. Uh, one other thing about coincidence is we know from many, many studies that people are much better at remembering when two things do happen together by total chance than when those things don't happen together. So we all can pretty easily remember a time when we were thinking of someone and at that moment they telephoned us. And that seems like, oh, maybe they called because they knew I was thinking about them at that moment. Uh, but we fail to remember all the times we were thinking of a person and that person didn't call us. Uh, the times that do happen are much easier to bring to mind. Uh, and that can bias us to thinking that something, um, something uh, other than coincidence is at work when really it's just coincidence. Another possibility is that the patient's headache and your subsequent headache are due to a common cause. Uh, so for example, your patient may have just started using a new hygiene product that day, a new antiperspirant or a new perfume or cologne, and something in that new product um, is something that causes a headache. So it's caused a headache in them because they are wearing it and now they've inhaled it and it's, it's not agreed with them. And now they've come to your office and they've said, I have a headache. And in the course of working on them, you also have breathed that in or got it on your skin. And so now you have a headache. And it's not because that person gave you a headache. I suppose you could say they gave it to you in an indirect way by bringing something to you that gave you a headache. 
Uh, so that could be the case. Or it could be uh, similarly that on that particular day, a flowering plant or tree has released its spores or seeds and they're an allergen. And so this person has an allergy headache and in the course of working on them, they've brought some of that allergen in on their clothes or it's come in the door with them uh, such that you get a headache due to the same allergen. So there is something coming with the person that gives you a headache, uh, but it's not the person themselves. Another possibility are what I'm calling social affective processes. Uh, social is simply a word to indicate that we're talking about the interaction between more than two or more people. Uh, affective is a fancy word for describing the way in which people display their emotions in their visage and in their body language. And we know from literally hundreds of studies that uh, affective processes are complicated and that some affective processes are a result of observing other people. So let me say what I mean. Uh, how does a person know at any given moment how they are feeling emotionally? Well, there are a lot of ways, uh, but we could quickly divide them into two categories. One is that you look inside yourself, so to speak, uh, that is you pay attention to what's going on in your body and in your mind to decide, I feel happy, I feel tense, I feel scared. Uh, but at the same time that you're looking and sensing inward, uh, we also are looking outward to see what is going on around me, including how are other people around me behaving. And it's been shown that the way that people around you are behaving and the way they're expressing their emotions will influence your own emotions. And that you might even be able to sort of catch an emotion from other people that you're interacting with. And this can happen without your realizing it. Uh, so possibly you're working on someone who has a headache and because they have a headache they're maybe scrunching their face a bit or they've got tense muscles in their forehead and they're expressing that they're tired or in pain and so on. And as you're working on them, perhaps without realizing it, maybe very likely without realizing it, you yourself start to exhibit some of those same affective behaviors that the person you're working on has. You start to scrunch your forehead in the same way. You start to position your neck and head in a way that maybe creates muscle tension that leads to a headache uh, because you are in some way mirroring their posture and emotional expression in a subtle way, but in a way that's um, powerful enough that it might occasionally bring about the same feelings in you that they are having. Another possibility is just plain stress. Uh, now, I'm often very critical of the way we use stress in relation to massage therapy and similar uh, subjects. I think we often use it as a catch-all word and we're not careful to say what we mean, but I'm going to use it in this instance because I think it does capture what I mean to say. Uh, working on someone who has a headache uh, is hard work. Uh, and so, and we also know that when people are placed under demands, they feel tension, and one of the ways that uh, they may experience tension is by developing a headache. So it may be that working on someone who has a headache just happens at that moment to be hard work, and doing that hard work brings about a headache in the person who's doing it. Um, and it may be nothing more complicated than you're doing something difficult and it gives you a headache. Finally, and I saved this for last and I include a question mark on it, it's possible that what's going on is transference or something akin to transference. Uh, transference is a word that comes from psychotherapy and in many forms of psychotherapy, therapists are taught to pay close attention to the feelings that they experience as they are working with their patient or client. And it's thought that paying close attention to those feelings might give you insight into how that person feels and in what it's like to be that person. Uh, this is a very big topic in uh, psychotherapy. Uh, different schools of psychotherapy place more or less importance on it. Some forms may place no importance on it. Uh, there's a variation of it known as counter-transference, uh, which is when the direction between the therapist and the client uh, changes. Uh, but 
without it going on and on about this, it is possible, maybe even likely in some circumstances, that in being a massage therapist and working on someone who is experiencing a symptom like headache or anxiety or depression or pain, you may become attuned through natural social processes, not through energetic magical processes. You may become attuned to how that person feels and start feeling that way yourself. If this sounds very similar to what I was calling social affective processes, I would agree that it is. In fact, these might be nearly the same thing or the same thing going by different names as they're coming from different traditions. This might be what a laboratory scientist calls uh, this thing, and this might be what someone who is a psychotherapist calls this thing. Um, so those, I think, are some of the most interesting possibilities uh, for this phenomenon that some people report that performing massage therapy on a headache might result in them themselves getting a headache, which logically and understandably leads to the thinking that, did I take their headache from them? Uh, which I think is an ancient uh, way of thinking about things, uh, but not a scientifically accurate way of explaining uh, what has happened. Uh, so that's all. Thank you.